dia, boa tarde a todo mundo. Sou a doutora Sophie Salden e sou pesquisadora e professora da Universidade de Birmingham em Psicologia. Então, eu vou começar hoje falando em português, só para explicar algumas coisas, mas eu vou fazer a maior parte da minha palestra em inglês. Mas se vocês tiverem qualquer dúvida, podem me mandar e-mail e eu vou tentar explicar em português ou em inglês. Então, no meu laboratório de pesquisa, estamos interessados no papel dos movimentos em relação aos aspectos sociocognitivos. E hoje eu vou falar sobre expressões faciais emocionais e o papel dos movimentos, especificamente a velocidade, na maneira que nós produzimos e nós percebemos as expressões faciais dos outros. Então, para começar a minha fala, eu vou trocar a língua agora para falar em inglês. So, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, here on my slides, you, just to point out, you can see um, the sort of silhouette of the University of Birmingham, and this includes the famous Old Joe Clock Tower, which is situated in the centre of our campus. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, I'm going to talk about the role of movement, so specifically movement kinematics, um, in facial emotion expression and perception. So the way we produce emotion with our faces and the way we perceive emotion from other people's faces. So the way we move provides useful information about our emotions. For example, anger is associated with high speed movement. So you might have noticed there was someone marching across the screen very quickly. Sadness is associated with low speed movement. And happiness, whilst slightly mixed, is usually associated with high speed movement. And what I'll do during this talk is I will refer to something called movement kinematics. And what I mean by this is the attributes of movement such as speed or velocity, um, the jerkiness of movement, and also things like acceleration and deceleration. These are all classed as movement kinematics. However, for this talk, when I mention movement kinematics, I'm going to focus on speed. So things like speed of movement. And what we know is that we use models of our own movement kinematics to judge the affective states or the emotions of others. So for example, if you imagine another person has a very slow or very fast baseline or natural walking speed compared to your own walking speed, you may be more likely to um, label them as feeling more sad or angry, respectively. What we also know is that movement kinematics have an impact on clinical conditions. So individuals with Parkinson's disease exhibit something called facial bradyskinesia, which is a slowing of the movement of the face. And they also show atypical facial emotion recognition. And it may be that these two things are related. As well as this, individuals with ASD, so autism spectrum disorder, exhibit atypical movement kinematics. For example, um, jerkier movements or faster acceleration and deceleration. Um, and this has been shown to impact directly on their ability to make social judgments about other people's movements. So it appears that this may be something that's quite crucial to think about in both typical and atypical facial emotion expression. But however, in the facial emotion expression literature, um, usually it's focused, uh, research is focused on the presence and absence of things called action units. And these are basically the sort of spatial configurations or spatial features of expressions. So you may imagine, um, a downturned mouth for a sad expression, um, but it's basically looking at the spatial features of a static expression. And there's a lack of research investigating movement kinematics, things such as speed, jerkiness, and acceleration of um, facial movement. There's also not much research looking at 
the different roles for different regions of the face, so different parts of the face, whether that's the eyebrows, the mouth, the nose, um, and whether or not different regions of the face use different speeds to express emotion. And finally, it's also worth thinking about whether the movement kinematics of facial emotion expressions are the same for spontaneous and posed expressions, because in the literature, these two things are used quite interchangeably. And it's presumed that uh, the same dynamic processes are involved in spontaneous and posed expressions. So the aim of the current talk is firstly to talk about the production of facial emotion expressions. And I'm going to talk through two experiments where we investigated facial emotion kinematics across different regions of the face, across different emotions, and also for posed, spontaneous and communicative emotional expressions. Then I'm going to talk about further two experiments where we introduce a newly designed perception task which allows us to manipulate the spatial and the kinematic features of facial emotion expressions. So the first experiments, so experiment one and two, comprised a sample of 109 participants in total. And what we did is we video recorded emotional expressions under three different conditions. So we did this first with spontaneous or induced expressions for happy, angry and sad. And these were recorded during a video emotion induction task or protocol. We also then asked individuals to pose a series of expressions um, and they posed expressions for happy, angry and sad. And we simply asked them to hold a neutral expression for three seconds and then move into an emotional expression for three seconds and then back to a neutral expression for a further three seconds. And here you can see an example on the screen of a posed expression for angry. And finally, in experiment two, we added this condition of spoken or communicative expressions for happy, angry and sad. And we asked participants to simply say the sentence, my name is John and I'm a scientist towards the camera. But whilst expressing as much emotion as they can, they could um, for happy, angry and sad. And so we used a novel analysis pipeline where we ran each video, um, so we in, uh, sorry, sort of uploaded each video into a software called OpenFace. And this allows us to track the moment to moment movement of 68 points on the face. And you can see these points um, highlighted in the, in the image on your screen. And we then used a technique um, from the paper um, by Zane and colleagues to analyze the speed of certain face actions. So one face action could be, for example, eyebrow movements, one could be mouth widening, and another could be mouth opening. Um, and we use the same technique to map these onto the open face, 68 points on the face. And so you can see D2 represents the eyebrow widening movement, um, and D8 mouth, uh, mouth widening, and D9 mouth opening. And what we found in our results is that there was a main effect of emotion. And what this told us is that happy and angry expressions had the highest speed and sad had the lowest speed movement. And this is quite consistent with the whole body movement literature that I showed you at the beginning. We also found an emotion by face action interaction. And this could be understood by the fact that mouth and eyebrow movements successfully differentiated between emotions. So the speed of those movements differentiated happy from angry and sad, um, but nose movements did not. So nose movements were not important and they did not hold important information in their speed about um, emotion. Just to unpack that a little bit more, um, I'll show you some ex uh, experimental data um, in these graphs. So on the graphs, you can see speed on the y-axis, and that's pixels per frame. And you can also see here represented both induced and posed expressions in purple and green. And over here, you can see combined uh, the combined expressions for induced and posed for eyebrow widening. And you can see this for three different areas of the face, so three different face actions mouth widening, mouth opening, and eyebrow widening. 
And you can see we have data for happy, angry and sad. And what we can see is that there is variation across face areas as well as across conditions. So whereas you can see that speed differences relating to mouth movements for posed expressions in experiment one um, are driven by happy being faster than sad and angry mouth related movements. If we look to experiment two, you can see for spoken expressions in purple that actually mouth related movements are faster um, for happy and angry expressions and they distinguish happy and angry from sad. If you look um, to the eyebrow region, you can see that for both posed and induced expressions in experiment one, we found that high speed um, eyebrow widening was found for angry expressions when compared to happy and sad of lower speed. And this was replicated if you look at experiment two in the posed condition, whereby you can still see that angry expressions in the, the eyebrow region is um, of faster movement, higher movement than happy and sad expressions. However, we did not see this for spoken expressions. And for spoken expressions, we see that um, faster eyebrow movements were, were able to distinguish happy from lower speed, angry and sad expressions. So it appears that although speed is an important cue for e expressing emotion, it may differ based on the region of the face we're looking at, the emotion we're expressing, and also the expression context, whether or not we are producing a posed expression, an induced expression, or a communicative or spoken expression. So on to experiments three and four. We designed this new task, which we call the point light faces task, and we created what are called point light faces from actors who, are, who were asked to convey facial emotion expressions whilst saying a neutral sentence towards the camera. So they were asked to say the sentence, my name is John and I'm a scientist. And we recreated the 68 points on the face using open face. And then we created the stimuli where you can see a black background with white dots overlaying. And here are examples of an angry expression a happy expression and a sad expression. So hopefully you can see that um, these faces use different movement in order to express um, how happy, angry and sad they're feeling. And we strip back all of the contextual cues like hair, any other cues that they might be getting so that we're as much as possible, we're focusing on the movement of those dots to give us cues about emotion. And after participants watched each of these stimuli, we asked them to rate how happy, angry and sad each of those expressions were from a scale from not at all happy to very happy. And we tested a total of 70 participants across these two experiments. Um, and it consisted, 100 and, consisted of 108 trials across three blocks, which took around 45 to 50 minutes. And there were four actors asked to express three different emotions. And the stimuli were then manipulated. So we created three levels of temporal variation or kinematic variation. Um, and these were 50% original speed, 100% of the original speed of the video, and 150% of the original speed. And we also created a spatial variation. And this was half the spatial exaggeration of the original uh, video stimulus. Um, normal speed, so times one distance um, in spatial exaggeration, and times 1.5 spatial exaggeration. And this gave us stimuli that we can manipulate for both spatial and temporal or kinematic features. And we can look at the role of spatial and temporal features in one's ability to recognize the emotion in the face. So again, to just give you an idea of some of our results, you can see here on the y-axis, facial emotion perception accuracy. So this is created as a mean of 
the rating that someone gave the the target emotion minus the non-target emotion scores because we asked participants to rate how happy angry and sad they were so you can sort of think of these as discreteness scores so how much that each person rated a happy stimulus as happy versus angry and sad and you can see here really interestingly that as we speed up um, or increase the speed of angry and happy expressions, we see that people's facial emotion perception accuracy increases. So it helps participants to speed up the expressions of happy and happy and angry. Whereas actually, as we increase the speed of a sad expression, accuracy scores decrease. And as we said before, angry and happy um, expressions are typified by fast movement and sad is typified by slow movement. So as we enhance that kinematic cue, people get better or worse at um, recognising the emotion. And just to show you, we also replicated this in experiment four. So I've, just, I've called it a discovery sample and a replication sample, but we basically found exactly the same thing where as we increase the speed of happy and angry expressions, we see increases in emotion perception accuracy. And as we increase the speed of sad expressions, we decrease accuracy. But this actually shows us that as we make a sad expression more characteristically slow, um, so by going to this slowest level, participants' accuracy is actually improved. Um, so we're really excited by these results and hope that this task can be really usable in the future. So just to discuss these findings, um, movement speed appears to provide an important cue in both the way we produce and perceive emotion from faces. So speed of facial movement seems to differentiate between happy, angry and sad expressions. And it contributes to emotion recognition independently of spatial cues. We also see um, from experiment one and two that eyebrow and mouth movements particularly are good differentiators across emotions. Um, but it's also important to consider what context these expressions come from. Are they induced, posed or spontaneous? Because this makes a difference to um, how we use speed to express emotion. And just to discuss the importance of these, um, we believe that the, this, these results should inform new models of face processing. And these currently neglect temporal features in favour of looking at the spatial or static features of, of facial emotional expressions. Um, and this is particularly important as we start to use algorithms that are designed to detect track and adapt based on the emotional expressions that are being picked up um, with facial, spatial tracking algorithms. And so it's really important that we incorporate not just spatial features, but also temporal or kinematic features of facial emotion expressions. And finally, I think this research can provide a framework for understanding differences in movement kinematics and also how that impacts social perception and social cognition in individuals with Parkinson's disease and autism. So for now, I'm going to uh, stop talking. I hope you found it interesting. I'd be very happy to receive any emails. Um, so my email address is at the bottom of the page here. Um, I'd like to thank all my collaborators. And also these experiments have been written up into a paper published in the journal Emotion. And if you scan this QR code on, that you see on the page now, you'll be able to access this article. And I'm happy to receive any feedback, comments or questions. Thank you very much.